Welcome to Worms and Warriors and welcome to Grand Tactician the Civil War. This is a brand new campaign. We're starting here with episode one, Confederate Campaign 1862. The vote is in and the vote is for the Confederate Campaign of 1862. So it's a different start than we've done before and it's hopefully going to be a good one. So we're going to get straight into this here. Um, but just before we do, we're playing this in the beta version of the latest update. So 1.1008 is the current condition of the game. And that's what we're rolling with. It'll be updated as we play this series. Uh, it usually happens when I play on the development patch and that's fine. So let's get this set up. So obviously we want to start the campaign here. We're going to be the Confederate States of America. Oops, wrong one. <laughs> Spring 1862. Okay, Confederates. We're going to play this game on very hard. And we're going to set the aggress aggressiveness to mediocre. I find that when I've played previously and had this too high, it really hinders the AI. It, it just it makes them too aggressive if we play on very high. Even elevated, he's too aggressive. I want to try this on mediocre and see how that goes. So very hard and mediocre for old Abe. We're going to go with historic policies for the ai we're going to do ours our policies our starting policies we're just going to start with what we start with here it's uh, old dominion king cotton and native allies i'm not going to mess around with these i'm not going to switch them at all usually i like to take off native allies and have uh, industrialization but i'm not going to bother uh, King Cotton as well i took on off a couple of times we've had some different ones i think we did we try slavery to the west last time I really can't remember. Um, but anyway, if, if you are new here and you like this sort of content, then you should really subscribe <laughs> and check out some of the previous series we've had going on here. This is maybe now the sixth campaign of Grand Tactician. Um, we've had Union campaigns. We've had 1864 Confederate campaigns. We've had a few Spring and Summer 1861 Confederate campaigns. So there's a lot going on on here. Usually Confederacy campaigns, to be fair, uh, since I've put this up for a vote. But an 1862 campaign is a first for this channel. Um, and it's not one I often see on YouTube either, so it might be an interesting one. Uh, so like I say, if you are new, then do subscribe. And just another note for viewers that this video will be chaptered, so if you want to skip ahead to a certain point, just check out the chapters and get yourself away to the part that you want to watch. Basically, we've got a whole bunch of viewer units that are going to go into this game. If you're new here, or if you haven't requested a viewer unit, if you're a returning viewer, then why not put a unit request in? And I'm happy to put that in-game. Obviously, it'll now be coming into episode two or three whenever i get around to putting them in but if you do want a unit then pop them in we've got a couple of uh, custom commanders as well but obviously once the game's in motion i don't think i can add new commanders so i wouldn't be able to add a custom commander for you but anyway spring 1862 very hard mediocre we're going to go with the old dominion king cotton and native allies they're not the best choices but you know i'm happy to go with this and hope maybe even make it a little harder for us um auto manage is coming off feuds i leave off i don't like the feud system I, it, I don't feel like it adds anything to the game other than real annoyance there's a whole load of intro here i'll do a quick scroll and i'll leave this on the screen so if you want to read it you can pause it and read through this at your heart's content There we are. So, I mean, I'll give you a basic overview of what's going on in 1862, at, at spring 1862. Um, so, we will have core in the field, but we can't create new armies with core because the army organization hasn't been unlocked yet. So, there will be army size units with core on the field. So, for example, the Army of Mississippi under A.S. Johnson here will have core underneath it, but it doesn't quite work out properly in game because you can't create new ones. It'll make sense when we get on the, once we get on the map. But anyway. Uh, in the Eastern Theater, we've got McDowell in the north of Virginia and some other forces in the Shenandoah Valley. Um, our forces are spread throughout northern Virginia and in the peninsula, where McClelland has landed with his force, his army of the Potomac, or the majority of it anyway, has landed on the peninsula and will be pushing towards Richmond. So that's going to be our initial headache. We're going to have to try and fight there. Burnside is there with his... Is it like the Atlantic Division or something? I can't remember. Maybe the North Carolina Division. I can't remember what they're called. Oh, Burnside's Coast Division. So Burnside's here with his Coast Division. Uh, they've invaded New Bern. They've got troops there. So 
another problem, obviously, in North Carolina. We don't want Union troops there. We've got Butler arriving near New Orleans, so we're going to have to try and hold that. We've got Lovell down here with a tiny force. I'm not sure exactly what he'll have in game, but re realistically, they couldn't hold New Orleans at all, as I'm sure you're aware, and that fell pretty early into the war, so not far from where we are here. Albert City Johnson is massing his troops near Corinth, and they're going to try and push the Union back towards the north. We've also got a force in eastern Tennessee under Kirby Smith, I believe it will be. Um, like I say, I don't actually know. I've never played this scenario before, but like just from my historical knowledge of the period. Um, so they, they'll be poised to invade Kentucky through the Cumberland Gap, maybe. I'm not sure. We have Van Dorn here, who's been pushed out of Arkansas after the Battle of Pea Ridge, which they lost, of course, against Curtis. Um, so we've all but abandoned the Trans-Mississippi at this stage, which is not a good place to be. So that's something we'll be working on to recapture some parts of Missouri, get some a foothold in Arkansas once again, if we can. We'll see how this goes. Like I say, it's a pretty difficult scenario. Um, Union advantage, morales on 90 each. 15 experience for them, 20 for us, 150,000 men in the field for us, give or take, 270,000 for the Union, 190 ships versus our 70. So it's a, it's a tricky start, this. We're being invaded all over the place, and it's going to be hard, So, it's that, but that's good, that's that's what we want. So let's get started with the campaign. I'll just I'll fire it up now, and we'll cut back in once we're ready to go. I'll, well, I've got units, to, I've got viewer units to recruit, so I'll recruit those guys in, I'll, I'll change some unit names, I'll recruit in requested units and i'll see you there we'll talk through the units all righty so for what for you have been seconds for me was about an hour and a half of sorting this stuff out um so let's let's have a quick look at the overview before we get started here so this is how things look at the see we've lost a big big chunk of tennessee um nashville's gone we do still hold memphis which is nice uh but we do we've got union troops on the river uh, we've got problems all over the place <laughs> and just before we get going with this so like just a quick note that if you just a quick word again sorry uh, if you are new here then this first episode is not a typical sort of episode of this game the, the first episodes of this series of these series are always a little longer a little slower because we're talking about units and where everything is and what troops we have available a little bit of strategy talk and a general overview uh, once that's done we get into the series proper and obviously we'll have much more action and things happening i mean hopefully anyway <laughs> so just bear that in mind as we go through this one and remember it is a chaptered video so as i said before we are organized into army so we've got the army of northern virginia here in virginia of course under uh, joseph e johnston they're scattered around virginia uh, organized the left wing, the center, the right wing, the reserve, and the army of the Valley District. So these, as you can see by the three X's there, they're core size units. Four X's is a full army. So the left wing under D.H. Hill. The center is under Longstreet. The right wing is under Magruder down right there down here in the peninsula. And uh, we'll have a proper look at a moment. The reserve is under Gustavus Smith. And then we've got the army of the Valley District here, which is Jackson's force, of course. Let's have a little closer look at the Eastern Department. So a couple of things that I've done. I've recruited an infantry brigade from Maryland into here, into Fort Johnston, and another brigade from Maryland into Fort Jackson. So we're going to have a few troops here. And why Maryland, you might ask? Be simply because the, the troop, uh, the support is so low at 40. I, if I can avoid fielding these guys, I will. But they'll come in handy for fort duties, okay? So there's that. I've also set up the Richmond Department, which is just going to be a recruiting force, which will stay around Richmond and like a last-ditch defense. Um, what else have we got here? Then, so let's let's start from the left-hand side. The Army of the Valley District. That's um, Thomas Jackson's force. So they're based in the Shenandoah Valley. We are facing the Fifth Corps with seventeen thousand men. So Stonewall's got himself seven and a half, seven thousand seven hundred men, caught around eight hundred and sixty disabled troops, sick. So the setup of this army was a little bit off. I've, I've fiddled around with it a little bit. So we've got Joe Johnston here. Attached to him directly, we've got Pendleton with some artillery. We've got Stuart with, with his cavalry division. Um, that consists of Fitzhugh Lee and uh, Pelham's artillery. They, they're Blakely rifles, so they're pretty good. But anyway, let's get through here. So we've got... the. We'll start... We'll look through and we'll get some viewer units on the go here. So we've got Hill. Early's division. Let's see what we've got in here. No viewer requested units. Then we've got uh, Gabriel Reigns' division. 
And there's our first rear unit. The first Georgia Sharpshooters. I couldn't remember what color you normally have, but I thought it was green. Uh, so I've given you olive green. If you want that changed, do just let me know, and I'm happy to change it over, of course. Uh, you asked for 500-yard range weapons. The only thing we have for that is the Mississippi rifle at the moment, but we will order Fayetteville rifles at some point. And if we get the British weapons, I'm happy to switch that over to the Whitworth but it'll be a little while for that. So Mississippi's it is for now. Let's keep going through these. So no other view units in Hills Core, just that one. Under John B. Gordon, the first Georgia sharpshooters. Then we've got the Centre Division. Well, Centre Core. <laughs> okay, um, so we've got AP Hills Division. We've got the Royal Black Watch, a viewer unit there. Red coats as requested with British black trousers uh you've got springfield muskets for now i will sort weapons out as we go along now this one here the first uh cs infantry brigade I've, you, you did request uh ap hill i believe so I've, i've put you in his division but as discussed in the comments i mean ap hill's not in use uh for a brigade i needed him for a division command so um i've given your boys junius daniel he's pretty good he's all right i mean he did ask for someone with high cunning there is just nobody with high cunning at this stage i'm afraid uh, who was available. So I've given you this guy. He's pretty good. His leadership's decent. Um, initiative's good. Administration's fine. You know, fame. All this stuff will get better as we fight. And I think he's going to do a really good job here. Then we've got Anderson's division here. We've got Pickard, Wilcox. None of these guys are viewer units. Then let's move on to Magruder. McLaws division. We've got the Queen's Own Volunteers and the Daniel M. Frost. Not amazing, but he will get better. <laughs> I'm, I, I, I'm telling you, he will get better, definitely. Uh, who else have we got then? Oh, the Queen's Own Volunteers. Uh, I was meant to give them like kind of red coats, but I must have forgot about that. Let's give them red coats. These rough-looking dudes. And that's it for Magruder's boys. Next up, we've got Gustavo Smith with his reserve core. I mean, they won't really be a reserve, but they'll be fighting. I can guarantee you that. And what have we got in here? So we've got the 29th Tennessee Infantry under Colonel William B. Bate. Decent commander from Tennessee. I wasn't sure if you wanted a different kind of uniform. I suppose we're going to... Uh... Yeah, what are these guys? There we are. Springfield muskets again. And like I say, I will go through the weapons and upgrade where possible. Uh, and then we've got... Mr. Beast Tigers under Armistead. They've got Springfield rifle muskets. You've got yourself light blue, blue tops and grey pants, I believe. Yeah. And they're in Hood's division. And then we've got Grumpy Grunt Part. Now, I've put you in the game. You didn't specifically request it, but you said it was dealer's choice. So there we are. And I've made you from New York, which I think is where you're actually from. But, you know, I'm not 100% on that. Um, but anyway, that's where you're from. And we've given you Union Luck troops with Springfield rifle muskets from Virginia. So, Grumpy Grumpa, your boys are in Jackson's core. They're going to have some hard fighting coming their way, I reckon. All right, then. So then the force I've created here for the Richmond Department... This also got a viewer unit in. That is the King's Resentment. Red coat look. Uh, mixed muskets, but uh, once they're recruited in, I'll give them better weapons. 19 days for those boys. So they're going to be brand new from South Carolina under David R. Jones. So we've also got down here at Columbia, South Carolina, the Army of the South. Now, this is just a, an administrative unit for now. But we've got the New Zealand Expeditionary Force all in black. Uh, from Florida, as requested. There was actually enough troops for that. So you got yourself a 1,500-man unit. They will expand as time goes on. Uh, mixed muskets, again, I will change those weapons once those boys are recruited in. And then let's move across here. So this is the Tennessee area. As you can see, our troops are concentrated here, and we've got uh, Van Dorm with his Army of the West just outside Memphis. But first, let's have a look at the Army of the Mississippi under Albert Sidney Johnston. So we're organized into four corps. I need to work on this a little bit because I don't like the look of it at all. <laughs> Attached to Johnston directly, we've got artillery and forest brigade. We've got Polk's first corps. And I think we've got some viewer units in here. Let me just whip through these and find them if we have. Uh, maybe not, but I thought we did. Nope, maybe not. Uh, Bragg's corps then. Let's have a look at them. Ruggles. 
Um, ah, there we are. He's the first one. So you requested Philip from Alabama, but of course I needed a surname as well. So I called him Philip Phillips. You know, that's that's your man. Uh, yellow tops and whatever color bottoms you'd asked for, I've put them in. Um, so this is your guy here, Philip from Alabama. Springfield muskets, but we'll give them some rifles in due course. We haven't got that much in the way of weapons just now. We'll have a look at that in a moment. So that's your boys here, the Habs. The Habs. I don't know if you wanted Habsburg and you just spelled it wrong, but you asked for Habsburg. I don't know if that means a different place or or something else. I, I don't know. But anyway, that's what you've got. Uh, you're on Bragg's core. Other than that, I don't think we have any further viewer units here. Ah, we do. We've got the Paducah Volunteers from Kentucky under Stephen D. Lee in red. Looking pretty swank in there. Again, with Springfield Muskets, I'll be working on weapons, like I say. I know I've said it now about five times, but I will be sorting them out. So there's another viewer unit right there. Dick White, you requested a unit in the Trans-Mississippi. We've got nothing in the Trans-Mississippi whatsoever. So I've put you as far as close as I could into Van Dorn's Army of the West. And there you are. The Yale County Rifles under Richard T. Whitewood, which is this, this fella right there. Springfield Rifle Muskets again. And from Arkansas, as requested. This army also needs to be arranged a little better. Uh, it doesn't look quite right to me. But this is, again, it's just a core size unit. So 3X is a core, 2X is a division, 1X is a brigade. So that's it in terms of forces. Um, actually, I've, I forgot to put a unit in, I think. Um, let me just find them. Oh, I was meant to recruit them, but I'd run out of recruits. <laughs> so we just need to find a unit and change them over. It's an artillery unit. All right, so these guys are going to be the Tidewater Boys, as requested. I've already done these somewhere. I seem to remember doing them, but I can't. I really can't find them now. Uh, as organized as ever. Yes, I have already done those boys. So there they are, actually. Ugh. You almost got two uh, Tidewater boys. Just rename the Virginia Artillery. So uh, anyway, uh, I missed these guys before. Where they? There they are, Tidewater boys in green with twelve pound Napoleon. So there we are. That is the viewer units all done, except for one more, I think. Uh, which Department of Norfolk under Hughie. We've got the Cockade Brigade under William Mahone or Mahoney. I'm not. I'm never sure how you say that one. Maybe Mahone. Uh, anyway, there he is, and there's your boys. I don't know if that's any good to you. Looks as close to what you asked for as I could get. They've got Mississippi rifles for now. I'll, I'll change them into something else if you like. Let me know. But that is the viewer unit situation in terms of weapons. So what have we actually got? We've got 500 Maynard carbines. We've got 16 12-pound howitzers, 8 24-pound howitzers, 300 Colt rifles. No Richmond carbines, but we can order them, and we will be getting on that soon. We've got four 10-pounder parrots. 14 uh no 14 pounder james's but we can order those springfield rifle muskets we've got 1400 in stock which i mean as you can obviously imagine that is not enough to equip a brigade unless it's a battered small brigade uh enfield rifle muskets a lot of our troops are actually equipped with these and we've got 1600 in stock but we can't order them which is ludicrous we should clearly be able to order the enfields because at this point of the war the confederacy was ordering thousands of enfield rifles um 500 Mississippi rifles, no Fayetteville rifles, but we can order them, and we will order them. Richmond rifles, again, we, we haven't got any, but we can order some, and we will. Slow reload on those, 2.5 rounds per minute with 450-yard range. A mediocre, uh, mediocre accuracy, so actually, they're not as good as the Mississippi rifle. But we can't get the Mississippi rifle because we don't have legacy rifles. Anyway, <laughs> the Fayetteville is pretty decent. 500 uh, range, mediocre accuracy, but it fires three rounds per minute. So we'll put some orders in in a moment. Uh, planes, rifles, we've got 500. We've got 2,000 Springfield Musketoons, 15 12-pound Napoleons, a one 12-pound field gun, and 27,000 Springfield Muskets. So there's not much, really. But we can change out some of the mixed muskets and things uh, to Springfield rifles at least and we do have a couple of thousand muskets uh, rifle muskets available but we'll order some more um, so that's the weapons let's talk strategy so we've got Kirby Smith over here this is going to be an important force for us and a force that I would like to push up through the Cumberland Gap with and hopefully cause them some problems in Kentucky 
Uh, what else we got here? We've got the Army of Tennessee facing us. Now, it looks like it's only, yeah, it's only 39,000 men with 100 guns. <laughs> Not too bad. But Alba City Johnson has got 35,400 men. And it says he's got 112 guns. Now, has he got that many guns? Six pounders, six pounders, six pounders, six pounders, three inch ordnance, that's not too bad. Six pounders, six pounders, more six pounders, and more six pounders. So it's nearly all six pounder guns, which are garbage. Um, so we are organized here into four corps, but they're so small. So we've got Breckenridge with his reserve corps, 5,800 men, Hardy with his corps there, 6,300 men. Bragg with a fair size core, 12,500, and Polk with a fairly decent one at 8,600, but they're pretty small core. Um, so, what we will do, we'll probably set up another recruiting core somewhere out here in the west and take from there, get some new troops recruited, and bulk out these forces a little. We're going to have to concentrate our men together, and we're going to have to fight the army of the Tennessee. It's almost time for the Battle of Shiloh here, historically. So, that was in April, obviously, we went March 21st, 1862. So, that's on the cards. There's a, a fight on the cards here for sure. Um, our readiness is pretty low, so we'll give them probably a week or so, and we'll push on. The Army of the West at Memphis. Again, readiness is really low, but they've been they've just had their asses handed them, and they've been kicked out of Arkansas. So we need to make a decision here. We need to put more troops into Arkansas to hold it or abandon it, one or the other. And I'm not entirely sure which yet. We've got to keep an eye on Vicksburg. We've got a small garrison in there. 49 men. Um... Lovell's force down here, like I was saying, 2,700 men. So these boys, they're not going to stop anything that's coming down here. Army of the Gulf is down here, but I'm sure there must be more forces than that. 4,700 men. We've got a decent fleet in the river here. 26 ships, which hopefully is going to do something. Lots of cotton-clad rams, as you can see here. Good units, good ships, uh, those. But uh, we'll see how this goes. Oh, well, we do have Duncan's Brigade, actually, in the fortifications. Let's take a look at those boys. So that's Duncan. He's the commander of the fort. Uh, and Duncan's Brigade here, which is under Benning. I'm going to replace him because he, he doesn't look very good at all. I'm going to put a good Brian in charge of that brigade. And I'm actually going to move this brigade out of there. So that's our first thing. They've got Enfield Rifles as well. Uh, that's our first thing that we're going to do. We're going to transfer these boys out of there. And they're going to go and join the actual army. So I'm going to move them out, and they're going to join Lovell's command. And what we'll do, we'll I'm going to put a small detachment of guns in here. Because I do want troops in there, just I didn't want those boys. We don't need a full brigade of infantry there. Because if that's going to fall, it's going to fall. So that's going to take Lovell's command up to 4,800 men. That's a bit more like it. Um, I'm going to also put some artillery into here. We'll recruit them from Florida. 23 days. Oh. But that makes this a bit more of a viable force. Almost 5,000 men with eight guns. Uh, anyway, so that's, that's that. We're going to try and hold New Orleans if we can. I'm going to keep Van Dorn over here for now. We're going to let him recover his readiness. We'll have a little think on things. And we'll play it from there. But this is our main attack. Our main kind of focus of any sort of aggressive movement is going to come from here. We've also got the Department of Southwest Virginia here with 3,900 men. I'm going to let them stay here for now. We've got to be wary of the Union troops in North Carolina. So the Coast Division, let's have a look there. That's actually 8,500 men, which I mean in the scheme of things is not huge, but we've got no troops down here at all. We do have Huji up here in Norfolk, but that's it's only 5,000 men. And, you know... I feel like we're probably going to have to move him up to help out around Richmond because this, this is a big problem. So the Army of Potomac, 98,000 men. Uh, obviously, we've got four corps over here, plus the troops at Fort Monroe. Uh, facing them, we've got the right wing under Magruder, 11,800 men. I mean, they're going to have to fall back from there if they advance. I mean, when they advance. We're going to have to pull our men back to protect Washington, as they did historically. But we're going to leave somebody here to try and occupy... The first core. I mean, historically, Jackson did a good job of that in the valley. But in the game, can we replicate that with less than 8,000 men taking on 17,000 Union troops? I mean, it seems unlikely, but I don't know. Maybe we can. 
The first thing we're going to have to do is move the Richmond department up to Richmond. We're going to recruit some more troops into there as well. So there's that. The next thing to look at is the Navy. So our fleets, we've only got eight fleets there. We've got the James River Squadron, which, as you can see, has not got much in it at all. A few tenders, and that's about it. The New Orleans Squadron, again, that's the one we looked at before. That's got a whole heap of these um, cotton-clad rams, which are decent ships. And that's a fairly decent, powerful squadron. Um, then we've got the Mississippi River Squadron, which is further up to the north. Not quite as well armed, but, you know, it is what it is. Charleston Squadron, tiny. Uh, Mobile Squadron, might as well not be existing. Savannah Squadron, same thing. Uh, Texas Maritime Department, again, tiny. And then Lake Ponchart. Poncha train? Not sure that. Uh, but anyway, that, that's not that's not too bad. But you know, what are they going to do? Not much. And then we've got a whole bunch of ships being constructed. We've got a, a bunch of steamers here, and then more importantly, cotton-clad, uh, casemate, iron-clad rams. Atlanta, Louisiana, Mississippi, Virginia, uh, a couple of double enders, and then some more rams again. Arkansas, Palmetto State, Richmond, and Tennessee. So these are going to form. A massive bulk part of our fighting force on the Tennessee, on the Mississippi River, if we can get them built and getting there. That's the fleets. <laughs> All right. So, what else is, are we doing here? Then let's have a look. Policies. We've already got some things unlocked. Of course, we've got uh, industrial industrialization of one. We've got military one and military two. We've got the Militia Acts, unlocked the Militia Act 3. We've got the Impressment Act. We've already printed notes. Uh, what else have we got? Diplomacy 1 is done, and Letters of Mark are also done. So the direction we want to take this in, I think, is going to be uh, conscription, for sure. So that's our first policy, conscription. Interventions at 35%. And then projects. This is a big one. I'm going to hold out for British Rifles. We already funded with 3 million, so we could unlock Austrian Rifles. I'm not going to do that now. We're going to wait for British Rifles. We've got a whole bunch of things available to us, but I'm going to hold out. Um, at the, for the moment, anyway. So we, we do have some subsidies here. We're going to do Farm Mechanization, which is a good one. So that's going to give us uh, increased production, and we're going to get 10% more volunteers. That's an, a really good one, actually. We're also going to have a look at this. Um, I did want to do legacy rifles, but uh, I don't think so. I'm going to actually go with medium range carbines. So that's that opened up. Like I say, I'm going to. I, I fancy the Austrian rifles. I usually get them. They're pretty good, but I want to hold out for the British rifles. And they're not miles away. So next up, what we do, we're going to order some weapons, okay? We're not going to order millions of weapons, but we're going to order some. We're going to order 3,000 of those carbines. We're going to order 2,000 uh, Maynard Carbines. And 3,000 Merrill Carbines. So that's, that's a massive order. It's going to hit our finances. And that is a problem, of course, that we need to work on. Um, so what else am I going to order here? We're going to order some Fayetteville Rifles. Not millions of them. We're going to order 10,000. And that's going to do for now for our weapons orders because we do still have some to give out so what i'm going to do now i'm going to actually i'm going to work on the weapons and i'll cut back in once i've given out the weapons and replace things like some mixed muskets that we still have so for example just just a quick example here let's have a look mixed muskets for sykes i mean we don't want them to have mixed muskets at all we don't want anyone to have mixed muskets mixed muskets so there we are springfield muskets for those boys at least and i'm going to go through all the units and sort them out and i'll cut back in when that's done i'll catch you in a minute All right, then, there we go. I've done a little bit of reorganizing, and we can maybe even start the campaign here. Let's get started and press play. State of Kanawha, or Kanawha, Virginia divided. So West Virginia has flipped to the Union. Yeah, let's pause a moment. So they are, they're going to come at us here, <laughs> of course. I suspect we will have to withdraw... We will relocate most of our troops. Towards Williamsburg. 
and see what happens with that. <laughs> the mountain department there, 13,000 men as well. The Kanawa division, 6,500 men. So, like, this is going to be really difficult. Uh, Hughie's department of Norfolk. I'm going to move them this way towards Richmond and then decide what to do with those boys. Just going to reorganize into a division here. Maybe a couple of divisions. Yeah, two divisions. That's a bit better structured. So we're going to pull the right wing back towards Williamsburg as well. We're going to make a stand there, I guess. The centre's moving. The left wing's moving. Uh, our headquarters are also going. Uh, the reserve under Gustavo Smith, they're going to stay here and see what occurs. <laughs> see what happens. But... I'm going to let these guys recover their readiness. I want them up in green, and then we're going to start shifting up. Someone's withdrawn already. Magruder withdrawn, okay. So they're constructing a fort up here as well somewhere. Siege at island number 10. Um, that's McCown's division here. Just, I mean, can they hold this? It seems unlikely to me, but we'll find out. <laughs> Department of the Mississippi, 84,000 men total. The Mississippi River Squadron here, 19 ships, 126 guns. And we've got our Mississippi Squadron with 7 ships, 38 guns. So basically, little chance of being able to achieve anything with our fleet up here. I mean, it's a decent defensive force, but they're, they're not going to be able to hold out against the 20,000 men under John Pope besieging them. And when that falls, that is going to be an issue for the Army of the West. So Magruder, is, he's pulling back in good order, but he's going further than I want him to go. So I'm going to change the orders for these boys. Actually, I don't want them going to Williamsburg because Magruder's already pulled back. Let's just we'll regroup outside Richmond. And of course, we've got the Richmond Department recruiting in here, the King's Resentment. I'm going to recruit a few more guys as well. A few more troops are going to be queued up. Let's get some guys from Georgia and some guys from Texas. It'll take them a while to get there, of course. Taking a little risk here, leaving uh, Fort Norfolk with just a 136-man garrison, especially when the uh, the force down here is already we've already lost sight of them. So we've issued bonds as well. We're on A minus, forming up a little force called the Army of the South. I mean, it was going to be an administrative unit, but I suspect we're going to end up having to fight with these boys. It's going to be a while for them. They're going to have 5,000 men, but we need to have some troops down here in case this. A force in North, North Carolina is pushing down on us somewhere and I'm, I'm sure they're going to do that and they'll be threatening rally North Carolina as well I'm going to transfer the Department of Norfolk into the structure for the Army of Northern Virginia so they'll be part of this command structure alright so Banks has come at us he's got 16,800 men we've got 7,000 I mean Historically, this wouldn't didn't really occur like this, but this is going to be our first combat here. It's going to be a diff difficult one. I have no idea if we can actually manage this, but let's try it. So <laughs> the first fight is going to be a real difficult one against Banks. Um, two objectives as well. This is going to be really hard. Manus Hill and Newmarket. Um, it's fairly open as well where they're coming in from. No, there. All right. Okay. Ah, actually, that might lend itself. So at least we can probably position ourselves here so as not to be outflanked with the rivers on our side. Let's have a look. Ah, they're not rivers. They're just little streams. I'm not sure if you can cross them. Probably you can. But that being said, this is not not too bad. It could be worse. So we've got Ashby, 450 cavalry, and they're backed up with some Napoleons. We've got Garnett's division. And Edward Johnson's division. Not much of an army for us to be working with, but uh, it is what it is. All right, so we're set up defensively. Um, I've left Ashby with his cavalry at the rear, guarding the new market point, but I mean... We'll have to wait and see what Banks does here. It could be that we need to pull out because we are outnumbered by 10,000 men. And, you know, what can I do? <laughs> Let's press play and get started. 
I didn't actually see that there was a fence here beforehand. That, oh, damn it. <laughs> Never mind. Let me get some skirmishes out. There's an elite unit here, the Stonewall Brigade. Union Cavalry coming in first. Let's hope AI Banks is as useless as real life Banks. We can see the dust getting kicked up here in the distance. Grumpy Grumpa skirmishes look like they're going to take some action here as well. Union infantry coming down behind there. 2,000 men of the 1st Brigade. It's good to see from the AI, so he immediately dismounted his men, and they're actually they're going to march to try and outflank us, I think. Let's give them something to think about. Hopefully we can draw them in here rather than let them outflank us. Burks' guys suffering quite a lot of casualties. them in the flank with Grumpa's men. Tolliver Skirmish is also pushing in. Pulling back to the dubious safety of this creek bed. Remember the main aim of this is to draw these men into our defensive position. Uh, and see how that works out. Not working out that well. We're on a real long range fire from these Union troops. Not sure what they're armed with, but they are reaching us now. We are not reaching them. Disappointing skirmish and opening the day. 75 losses for them, 50 for us. I'm just repositioning these rifles, but then they start firing, of course.
got to pull these skirmishers back. They are with muskets, there's just no chance. All of his skirmishes are broken. Uh, Grumpa's boys are in combat, but they will not be able to hold there. We have got glitching happening here. These guys are not moving. They've opted just to turn their backs to the enemy and do nothing. is reattaching but they're not actually doing it they're just standing there getting killed glitch 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 grumpa's men are broken all our skirmishes are running okay Taking artillery fire now as well. Idle. They can't fire. Great. There's no reason whatsoever why they shouldn't be able to hit those guys, but they can't. Tough little fight this to open this campaign. Why are they idle? Come on! How have we lost 209 men? He's lost only 80. We're behind cover.
collar was almost broken. Grumpa's men are... I don't even think they're firing. What is going on here? This is bullshit. I mean, these guys are just standing just out of range for some reason. They can't fire here. This obviously is this is glitch to hell. Disappointing. Why is the range marker going to here? Why are they not advancing? Why are they not doing what I'm telling them to do? It's just one of them things in this game that constantly seems to happen. Very, very disappointing. Ah, there we go. Finally managed to move him forward. Now, if you just wouldn't mind just keep firing, that would be nice. All of us got to break any second. There they go. This battle is lost, I would say. He's also going to run, I would think, any second now. Ashby's done. <sighs> Stonewall Brigade's going to flee, are they? Bullshit. Yeah, this is an absolute disaster for first battle. And what on earth weapons have these guys got? They're absolutely decimating our men. We have managed to send this brigade running at least. Not that it's going to make much difference. Yeah, the Stonewall Brigade broken. Absolute bullshit. Elite unit, special flag, good commander. 500 casualties and running for the hills. We are done for. Major defeat, okay. Yeah, we're pulling out. Absolute disaster.
My God, that was a complete disaster. Two thousand five hundred eighty-three men lost. They lost two thousand men. They had seventeen thousand. We had seven thousand. I mean, it was never going to be. It was never going to be a good thing. I don't think. Tolliver's fallen into disgrace. Get rid of him. Disaster, new market. It really was. So this puts a whole different spin on things. Uh, we're having to give up most of the valley here. It means the fifth course on our flank. Stonewall Jackson's had his ass kicked there. This is a difficult campaign. Uh, like I can tell already, this is going to be an absolute nightmare. Simply because, it, like, it's not historical. Um, McClellan here is not as slow as McClellan was in real life. He's already advanced to Yorktown. Uh, no bother. Obviously, Banks is way more capable of concentrating his troops here and taking us on as one force together, which you've got no chance taking on when you've got 7,000 men. It's just not going to happen. Uh, this is difficult. It might be a short campaign. I mean, it could well be a short campaign. Let's, we'll see how this goes, I guess. But if we carry on like this, it's going to be the shortest campaign a Grand Tactician I've ever done, that's for sure. <laughs> so this was the first episode. I do hope you enjoyed it, even though it was tough. Um, we're going to work on things. We've got lots of work to do. Army of the Ohio just popped up here as well, 18,000 men. I'll be Don Carlos Buell. Um, so, yeah, it's tough. It's a hard one. It's definitely a hard one. Uh, and I'm looking forward to carrying it on. Let's see where it goes. Let's see what we've got going on. If you enjoyed the episode, please leave a like, leave a comment, let me know what you thought of it, and sign up, uh, sign up, well, subscribe for more. Tick the little notification bell if you want to get notified of new episodes, and I'll hopefully see you along for the ride. Let's see what happens with this. A disaster to start with. It's not often I can say that. Um, <laughs> but, you know, it is what it is, and that wasn't good. We'll do better next time. See you later. Ta-ra for now.